Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. So today we're going to be working on creating signs out of scrap wood. Lumber prices are through the roof and you know, we need to make signs for those bears and those other chainsaw carvings. And so we need to save the scrap so that we can do that. I'm going to show you guys one way that I like to make some quick, easy, cheap signs out of scrap wood for my chainsaw carvings. Be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe. Don't go anywhere. Let's get started. <laughs> All right guys, like I said, quick easy signs out of scrap wood. Now we're gonna need to use a router um, and obviously a bit for that today. I'm gonna be using my jaw horse, some earmuffs, dust mask, a little bit of safety gear, that kind of stuff. But for the most part, we're also gonna be using all kinds of scrap wood. Now in my case, I've got a lot of cutoffs from other projects that I'll be making just some quick signs out of. And I've also got chainsaw carving cutoffs. Most of you will have stuff like this, you know, from carvings, you know, crazy weird pieces. If it's got a flat side and it's thick enough, save it, save it. And look at these, look at this little piece. Great for a small little welcome bear. All right, over here, I'm all set up already. This here was a piece cut off. Um, these are actually cedar pieces from something I had been working on, leaving the one side rounded. And we're just going to router it in. So I'm going to be using this uh, Bosch GKF125CE trim router. Now this has a quarter inch bit in there. It's a spiral bit. I recommend the spiral bit for doing the signs. It uh, helps remove the sawdust, kicking it up and out. Now obviously you guys can do this with your chainsaws if you want. But this will leave a cleaner finish. And I can like knock out more signs in a day using this router so you know i got my dust mask my earmuff stuff but making yourself a little platform like this one screwing it to a two by four or a four by four whatever you have for scrap can really help because then you're able to take a clamp clamp your workpiece down i write welcome on there because when you get going for some reason you get a brain fart and you wait right you know whatever you miss the l you forget the c there's no o it happens so what I like to do is uh, get a bunch of pieces together, grab one of these, uh, it's a Dixon wood crayon, lumber crayon. I like red because it's easy to see. And just throw welcome on there really quick. Now I don't always keep to the exact, you know, lettering that I did. I'll just use the router, but it gives me quick spacing and a quick idea of, uh, you know, will welcome fit and how will it fit on the board. Now, really what I'm going to try to do is set the camera up so you guys can watch. We'll do a few of these together, but it's very simple. We're just going to set the depth of our router to about maybe quarter of an inch or so. Um, you know, I said this was all we were going to need. That's, that's me. I misspoke. Sorry. Um, we'll also need like a grinder or a sander and your paint. I will be using spray paint. We'll spray it in, set it, you know, let it all dry and then come back, sand off all the excess over spray that'll be around the letters, grind it off, whatever works for you. So hopefully we'll do one of those all the way to completion. But uh, for now, I'm gonna try to get this camera, but, but, but boy, I tell you, it's one of them days already. I'm gonna try to get these cameras set up so you guys get two views, two angles, and uh, we'll start making some signs. Okay, so I'm gonna get my gear on and uh, we'll get this first sign cut out. I'm also gonna give you guys a little tip for cutting out the signs with a rounded back. So we'll probably do two of these at least. So I got this already set to about quarter of an inch. That way there I don't go through the board and it'll work with almost all the pieces I have. Because this is not a plunge router, it's a fixed router. You gotta be very careful when you're setting it in the wood because you could snap your bit if you get the death wobble. So if you're gonna be using this, you gotta be super careful, try to bring it in nice and straight and start cutting. Now it has to be on and uh, hopefully I'll be able to turn the volume down. <laughs>
As you guys can see, it's actually really quick, right? You get in a rhythm, you can knock these things out super fast. Now, if this was a smaller sign, this thickness is perfect for the smaller ones, but we kind of need to make all these letters just a, you know, a little bit wider. So I'll go back around and thicken everything up. Got to be careful though in spots like this. If you guys can see, it's really close. So we want to leave lines in between. All right, we got to be careful not to knock that piece out. Kind of crammed it a little too too close together. I should have spaced it out better, but at least you guys get to see, you know, what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go through one more, make it a little bit wider, and then we'll add some color and start the next one. All right, as you guys can see, I'm done. I'm not doing any more on this sign as far as carving or routing goes. This is it. It's time to throw some paint on it, let that dry while we start the next one. Now, as you guys can see, it's not perfect. I'm not trying to make a perfect sign here. I'm trying to make signs that I can knock out fast for stock, for bears that are gonna go to stores, go to craft fairs, go to those sort of things. Now, this is also why I'm using scrap wood has rough edges, it's not a perfect cut, and it doesn't need to be a perfect sign. When somebody orders a custom sign for me, now that's different. I take my time, I make sure I'm using a new sharp bit, I'm going slow, I follow my lines, we hand paint every letter, we don't spray paint, it's more of a mess, and uh, yeah, it's just done differently. But as far as chainsaw carvings go, this is one option that I do so I can knock out a whole mess of signs in a really quick amount of time. So let's spray some paint on this. We're gonna let it dry, and then I'm gonna show you guys how we can do one that has a rounded backside and try to keep it from moving around. So as far as this sign goes, because it's gonna be on a bear that's about three feet tall, on average, people like black, green, and red letters here in upstate New York. I can get away with black letters, everybody likes it. So I'm gonna do black because I'm not gonna have a bunch of signs that are perfectly this size to fit the bear I have. When the smaller signs come about, we start making smaller signs, and I carve my bears an average size so they all fit, I make all kinds of colors and I let people mix and match their signs. You know, so we'll do blues, we'll do greens, reds, purple, whatever. People love having options. 
in that sort of aspect. They really do. <coughs> so you want to make sure to blow all the dust out of these cracks and crevices in there. Otherwise, it's just going to come out later when you go to clear coat and uh, it just, it, it's a mess if you don't. So I try not to lay it on super heavy because, well, it doesn't really matter. I try not to, it still does it. Like I said, I'm not going for perfection here. We do have to try to get all our edges on the inside of the letters though. So we want to be spraying, all right? Now, the thing that makes this tough is it'll soak into the wood and sometimes you can't get all the overspray off because the wood absorbs it. So you gotta just, you know, try to find that happy medium of where it's not too much paint, but it's enough to cover what you're trying to cover. This nozzle that sprays flat is kind of a pain in the butt for this. If you know what I mean, this one sprays a, sprays a line. If you get the one that sprays a circle, it's a little easier for signs. But this is just a can I grab real quick, so we'll make it work. Now, I've seen other guys, you can hit it with the torch, dry it super quick. I've done that myself. Um, you can just leave it in the sun, let it dry while you work on other signs. Paint them all at the same time. That usually tends to be, you know, easier. And then just leave them all out, let them all dry and move on to, you know, the next project. Move on to working on the bears they're gonna fit, you know? Then you can carve the bear, carve his hands or paws to hold the signs you've already made. I tend to do that quite a bit myself. All right, so we're gonna set this sign aside. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a cup of coffee. I had somebody say to me, Kyle, what kind of coffee, you know, am I getting you? Because if you become a member, you can be a buy me a cup of coffee member for like $1.99. And uh, I just drink Folgers, to be honest. Uh, make it here at home and... Yeah, drink Folgers. Anyway, if you wanna be a member, there's links down below. I will try to link the tools I'm using or something similar down below as well through Amazon. You guys purchase through those links, they help support the channel. And I greatly appreciate it. And you know, becoming a member helps support the channel more directly. Um, there are some more in-depth tutorial videos available for those on the tutorial tier and honestly a lot of it's just the uh, satisfaction that you help me grow my art my channel get me that much closer to making this a full-time job because honestly i still work full-time got a family and uh, i do this full-time for you guys as well so yeah enough about that let's see how do we clamp down something that's round and we want to carve right because look at it's going to move it's going to do all this craziness well, if you've already been chainsaw carving, you should have all kinds of cutoffs. Ooh, there goes my dust mask. You should have all kinds of cutoffs. Grab some that kind of look like triangles, pyramids, wedges. Get it near the edge so your clamp will fit. And stick them underneath the end. Clamp it all down. Okay, look it. No longer moves. These help support it and keep it straight. Does it always work that perfectly? No, it doesn't. But usually, for the most part, nine times out of 10, it'll hold well for you, okay? So we get all the way down as far as we can, stop, switch our ends, continue. Now this is a smaller sign, so I don't know if we'll widen the letters at all. We may keep them kind of small. We'll see what happens when we, uh, when we get into it. So once again, earmuffs and a dust mask. Still keeping the router at about the same. And honestly, it doesn't matter what router you use. If you have a router, any router will work. And if you, even if you have flat cut bits, they'll work too, just a straight bit. Like I said, I just like these spiral bits because they kind of, I don't know, they help throw the sawdust away from the project. But there's not a lot of tear out with them either. So that's always a plus.
If the wood is dry, the sawdust comes out super easy. If the wood is wet, the sawdust sticks in the corners and you gotta, you know, hit it with the air a couple times, okay, to get it out of there. There's a catch 22 here, right? If it's dry, it cleans off easy, but pieces like this or like these corners will break off easier as you're carving. If it's green, they can still break off, but they don't break off as easily. The green wood is much more forgiving usually, but then it's harder to clean. So there's kind of this, you know, little catch 22 there. Now these, I'm not messing with these letters any more than this, and we're gonna spray it and let it dry. In this case, I'm gonna just throw some blue on here. So this is the round nozzle. And like I was saying earlier, guys, the round nozzles for signs, I like. I like that flat spraying nozzle for when I gotta put black on a bear. It's just easier, it covers more surface area. <sighs> These spray cans clogged. Stop working. This is such a, uh, a battle here. Keep your cans capped. You take those caps off, you get dried up stuff in here, and then it clogs that nozzle. Good idea, don't leave your cans in the sun or uncapped, keep the caps on. I end up always just chucking them or they break. But that's what happens when you don't keep them capped. You'd think I'd learn, but I don't. Anyway, we're looking to do minimal overspray. Again, these are just quick signs. So you could do this different. You could paint the board, right? And then just router the letters out and have the routers be the wood color. Um, you can not paint your letters and just burn the board. Maybe we'll do that one next for an idea, all right? Now I get it. Not everybody has a router. Maybe not everybody can spend the money on a router just for these quick signs. That's fine. Don't. You don't have to. Uh, I think in the next video after this, I'm going to get out the chainsaws. And if you have a chainsaw with a dime tip bar, we'll make a couple signs with that just so you guys can see how that works as well and kind of see the difference between this video and that video. So give me one second here. And this one will burn. No paint. Like I said, variety is good. It's good to have a variety. Um, I mean, not too much of a variety, but like I'll have a few different colors, especially if I'm making a ton, but a lot of black, a lot of burnt, a lot of red, a lot of dark green. And then I'll throw in some fun colors for customers to choose from. But you know, the majority are those base, for me, rustic colors that uh, people buy the most, so. Before I torch, is I want to sand this back. If you guys look, we got fuzzies, okay, on top. We still got some, man, these trucks are loud today. We still have some crayon on here. So I kind of want to just rough sand it, and then we'll hit it with the torch after. So let's uh, prepare to do that. Quick tip, if this is dry wood, it'll sand way easier with the orbital, orbital sander. It'll clog up and be tough to sand if it's green. If it's green wood, the uh, angle grinder sometimes is a better option, so. So we get our torch. This is just a Benzomatic T8, TS8000. You know, if I was ready to go, I could have the turbo torch make a ton and just hit them all quick, but this works. This is somewhat affordable for most people as a torch goes. You know, you buy your little Coleman one pound tanks, Buy them, refill them, whatever, whatever you're into, and uh, it works just fine. So we can call that sign done. Now, 
Another thing you guys can do before you hit it with the torch, you could paint the colors in there, let it dry, sand the colors off, and then torch it. You know, maybe we'll do that on one of the ones that are painted. I think they're dry. So there it is, quick option if you're not looking to mess around with paint. That one's done, ready for clear. Paint's dry enough up here. That's from when I painted it. Nothing coming off on my hands. Let's grab our sander. I'm using 80 grit, okay? It doesn't need to be perfect. I don't even care if there's swirls in it. We're looking to do it quick and get it done, ultimately. You could get two different things out of this. A customer could go, oh, that's cool. Or, oh, that guy's lazy. He didn't sand all the paint off. You, you, you gotta kinda weigh it out, you know? So, I'm actually gonna leave this one this way because I think the blue looks really neat. Somebody likes it, cool. If they don't, whatever. Somebody else will probably like it. Now, what I'm gonna grab next is the other sign. And we're gonna go ahead, because this is ready for clear now. We're gonna grab that other sign and an angle grinder and clean it up with the angle grinder just so you guys can see what that looks like you know, for another option. So here we are set up with the black one. I do just have a fine grit disc. I recommend the coarse, the green coarse discs from Sabretooth. I also recommend that you guys buy a paddle switch. So it has a paddle here. The grinders that just turn on and off are more dangerous than having a paddle, okay? Because it can rip out of your hands when you're carving and doing other things that you're gonna use this for. And if it rips out of your hand with a paddle switch, it shuts off. If you have one like mine, it doesn't. It will run right up you, you can get hurt. So safety wise, if you don't have one yet and you plan on getting one, get one that has a paddle switch. You know, it's done, nice light color, it's ready to go. If you want that burnt look, your paint's already in there, the paint should be dry, as long as it's dry. If it's wet and you hit it with the torch, it's gonna flame up, okay? So, keep that in mind. Right, so done that's it just a nice light burn so the letters still stand out and this is ready for clear now some people say what kind of paint do you use you know this is just ace brand this is rust-oleum try to buy paint that's in that two to four dollar range it can right if you buy the 99 cent stuff dollar stuff um, yeah it's cheaper but it doesn't always stick as well it doesn't always stay as well sometimes it comes right off when you hit it with the air so you know sometimes with certain things you just get what you pay for and in this case i have found it just better to buy that paint that's three to four dollars a can hopefully you can find it on sale sometimes at walmart or other places but that works out really well now what i like to put on all my signs is at least one to two coats of helmsman minwax we'll do a video about finishing and how i finish but just a real quick so you guys know um that's what I use on all my carvings and everything. If I'm using a bright color, a vibrant color, I'll buy like the Rust-Oleum clear coat or the Ace or whatever store brand clear coat and spray it on. And usually it comes out clear, seeing how the Minwax has a uh, amber tint to it. And if you want vibrant colors, the amber tint will change it and make it look yellow. So, well guys, that's it. Hopefully this video helped you out with making these signs, gave you just another idea. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe, all right, guys? There's a bunch of leaks down, link, link, blah, 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 blah.
links down below. You guys can follow me on social media, all right? I do that TikTok thing. I'm on Instagram, Facebook. We got a Facebook group, Kyle Hall Woodworker, New Carvers. Um, if you're chainsaw carving, you want to share your work, go there. You guys can join that page. Just doing it for people that are subscribed, want to share their work. Eventually, we'll get a video together and put all your work together and share it here on YouTube as well. Um, I also have Amazon links, tools or similar tools, things that I'm using. You guys buy through those links. They help support the channel. We've also got a halfway decent number of members on here. You know, they buy me a cup of coffee. They help support the channel through the tutorial program. And uh, you know what? You guys rock. I really do appreciate it. Our, uh, our members fluctuate up and down, and that's okay. That is okay. It's just something extra that some people like to do and give back. In the, uh, the tutorial tier, you guys receive special tutorials and uh, a little extra help when I get time to do that. So that's always a plus, right? Help you out with your carvings. You guys help me, I help you, and uh, it's a win-win. I really do wanna thank all of you for watching. You know, we're creeping up on 10,000 subscribers, which is just a, uh, uh, something I've really been looking forward to. We will be doing a giveaway once we get to 10,000, maybe a little over. I'll set that up. We're going to give away a new die grinder and some bits. I got a little bit of swag from Sabretooth Tools to give away as well. And uh, oh, and a little, uh, little, little Wen uh, Dremel style tool with a flex shaft. We're going to give that away as well when we get to 10,000 subs. So, you know, if you're not, make sure to hit subscribe. You guys don't want to miss it. Also, I'm going to be doing a video making signs like this, but we're going to be using the chainsaw for those of you that can't get a router, but you do have a dime tip bar. So make sure when you hit subscribe, you hit the bell and you hit all so you guys don't miss future uploads, okay? And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today. Hope you guys, uh, hope you guys have an awesome day. I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video.